My name is Dennis Deloach, and I am the host of the Uncle Jim Effect podcast, and welcome. The 35th episode, I can't believe I'm saying that. This is our 35th episode, and I'm full of gratitude for you supporting us along the way. Uh, please subscribe to the channel below and share with your family and friends. Uh, we're also on Apple Podcast and Spotify. And uh, our goal with this podcast is to help millions of people realize their God-given potential and to magnify that potential in the service of their family, friends, neighbors, and communities, and thus creating a tsunami of hope. And we're well on our way to starting that. The hardest part of that is to start. We've started. We now have almost 30,000 subscribers, and we're growing by leaps and bounds each day. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to talk today about commitment and specifically with commitment. Commitment is acts, not words. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. I want to start first with a quote by one of the greatest football coaches of all time uh, and leader of men, Vince Lombardi. And Coach Lombardi said, most people fail not because of a lack of desire, but because of a lack of commitment. So all of us want to be successful. All of us want to have a better life. All of us want to be in better shape, be more successful, have more resources in the bank, help more people, be better uh, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, spouses. All of us want to be uh, able to accomplish hard things. Why is it that some of people do and others don't. Why in our own lives do we excel in some areas and in some areas we don't? We're going to talk about that. I believe that revolves around commitment. And we're going to talk about why in a minute. Uh, there's some interesting concepts about commitment when you break it down as to why it's not simply saying I want to do it. We have to tie that into passion or emotion. We're going to talk about that in a minute. As we always do, let's start with a definition of commitment. And it says it's a pledge or a promise to do something. A pledge or a promise to do something. And it also, it involves dedicating time, energy, and effort to achieve a particular goal or, or objective. It's a key factor in anything you achieve in life, any success you have in any area we talk about, whether it's health, weight, relationships, business, accomplishing a physical goal, wealth goal, anything and everything you can talk about, there must be a commitment. And having a commitment means staying focused and dedicated to your goals, even when faced with obstacles or setbacks, right? It requires discipline, perseverance, and a strong work ethic. For example, you might be someone who's saying, I want to get in shape and I'm going to run every morning. I'm going to walk every morning. I'm going to get up every morning and do whatever I need to do outside. And I start tomorrow and I wake up tomorrow and it's raining. Are we committed? I didn't say I was going to run and get in shape only when it's nice weather. So what do we do? What's that decision process in your mind? Uh, my good friend, Tom Shea, that Navy SEAL that we've had on the show, and I refer to him a lot because of the unbelievable mindset these guys, the Navy SEALs have. And he talks a lot about that. When we make the commitment, it has nothing to do with that. So if we wake up, we committed to go. You go outside, it doesn't matter if it's 90 degrees, 10 degrees, snow, rain. You just go. It's not an issue. And so I know it's not that easy, but we're going to talk about that in a minute, how we can do that. A key point of this podcast and of this discussion on commitment is the success of commitment occurs when the desire or passion merge with the level of emotion we attach to the outcome. Let me say that again and let's discuss that in detail. The success of commitment occurs when the desire or the passion we have merge with the level of emotion we attach to the outcome. 
What does that mean? So we have an extreme desire or passion to accomplish a goal of getting in shape or losing weight or running a race, right? We want to do it. We've seen our friends do it. We know if we do it, it'll make us feel better, look better, and be healthier. We want to do it. When we can now merge that passion or desire with the emotion we attach to the outcome, or man, when I cross that finish line, that will be after six months of hard work. I am going to be fit. I am going to look good. I'm going to feel good. I'm going to fit in those clothes that I couldn't. I'm going to be able to walk and not faint. I'm going to be able to do things. I'm going to I just am going to be more positive when I can merge that and when I can lock into that result, that emotion that I will feel, if I can merge that with the passion and desire I have, commitment will not be difficult. Again, commitment is an act. It's not a word. So when we talk about committing, it's an act. And an act means what is something that takes place? Well, what takes place is we said we're going to do this and we do not back down, right? So let's talk about, I want to share an example and I've shared it before. Now, I could share with you a million examples of me not being committed, but I'm going to share with you one where I was committed. And I, I share this with you not to boast because it's not that cool of a deal. But I share with you to go step by step through the process, right? And plug in whatever it is you're talking about. This is not about me and what I did, but plug in what you're doing. So as you know, I I was way, way overweight and had a uh, some heart issues and had a cardiology appointment where the cardiologist basically said, you're extremely obese. You're going to die. You need to you know, either change what you do or get used to the fact you're living on the edge of death. So I decided with the help of my friend, Tom, to attack something that was way, way out of my comfort zone. And I uh, signed up to do one of the hardest mountain half marathons in the United States in Moab. Hard not only because of the vertical amount of climbing, you're on all different kinds of surfaces from sand, gravel, slick rock, sides of mountains, cliffs, uh, dirt. Uh, and it, it is a brutal race, but it's also half of that race is on the edge of two, three, 400 foot sheer drop off cliffs. And when I say on the edge, I mean, literally within a foot or two of these cliffs where the trail is. And I'm death, deathly afraid of heights. And so it was on multiple levels that this was going to be a big challenge for me. The least of which was that I was so out of shape. So I made a commitment to do that. Uh, and so as I speed this story up, I accomplished that goal for four years in a row. But uh, on the fifth year, I decided to do it. I thought, you know, this, I'm just, my time is staying about the same. It's not doing much better. I, I've got to focus now on doing something again that's hard. I'm going to make my the best time I've ever had. And so I focused on that. And I started training in February. And this race is in the first Saturday of November. So this was February. And so I got after it in Utah in February. It's pretty cold. So I, I got after it. I was tracking my my uh, runs, my hikes. I was doing specific numbers of miles and, and vertical climb certain times a, a week. I was tracking it. I was really on top of it. And I felt really good about what I was doing. I felt good that I was starting so far in advance. And I really thought I'm going to be able to get this. So we're outside playing pickleball and it was on March 24th. I'm sorry, April 24th on a Friday night playing pickleball and I ruptured my right Achilles by any, uh, stretch of the imagination. That's a devastating injury. And even my friend Tom said, well, we, we have to alter that goal. That's not something that probably you're going to be able to do. And it's amazing at that point that triggered me. I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to prove even my friend, the Navy SEAL wrong. And so against the advice of even the doctor and my family and my friend, I said, look, it's not like I'm setting the world on fire. I am going to get this done. You know, I said, I'm going to commit to finishing that race. I'm going to do my best to beat the time, but that's not the key. And so I started 
uh, April 24th. Uh, well, I ruptured it that Friday, April 24th. Uh, Monday, I went and saw the doctor. The first thing they did is put me in a cast. He gave me the option of surgery or casting it up for a month. And I said, at this stage of my life, what would you do? And he said, you know, I would probably cast it and avoid the surgery because there's uh, uh, opportunities for infection because you're in an area that there's not a lot of blood flow. And I said, fine, if that's what you do, I'll do it. Cast it up for a month. So now I'm at the end of May, starting June. And then it's about a eight week process to get to where you can walk and stretch and do all those things, let alone going up mountains. So now I'm at the end of July in the first of August before I can really start attacking. But I was very faithful about my stretches and doing it. And I was always ahead of schedule. I was comparing myself to Kobe Bryant, who was a phenomenal Hall of Famer, uh, NBA basketball player, one of the greatest five or 10 players ever to live, who tragically died several years ago in a helicopter crash with his daughter. And he had come back from this devastating injury in kind of record time. And so I was kind of uh, staging my rehab along with his and trying to actually stay ahead of him. Albeit, I'm not coming back to an NBA game. I'm coming back to walk up a mountain. But still, I, I had to have something to compete against. And so I did that, and I stuck with it. And I didn't give up on that goal. And I kept quiet about it. I didn't even tell Tom I was going to do that. Long story short, uh, I got to that point. And uh, because it was a COVID year, I think I forgot to say that was in 2020. April 24th was a Friday, 2020. They started this race different now because they staggered it. I was shocked they even had it, but they staggered the race. So I didn't even start the race till about one o'clock. They had all the good, fast people start early. And then about every half hour, they staggered. There's thousands of people in this race. So long story short, I, st I go in the, the very last group of the day because I'm one of the slowest. And it's about one or one thirty. I don't remember. And we start the thing. Well, again, it's November now and it's starting to get dark early. Long story short, I'm the last person off the course. My family thinks for sure that I've been lost and eaten by wolves. And as I come across that finish line, it was dark. Uh, literally in about 10 or 15 more minutes, it would have been pitch dark, but it was pouring rain. It had been the worst weather you could imagine. Winds of 20 to 25 miles an hour, always somehow in our face. It was a uh, pouring thunderstorm, rainstorm, lightning, uh, all that last hour and a half about. Uh, and I was chuckling the whole way like, man, it, there cannot be anything harder or added on this race to what I'm going through. And it made me laugh. And I thought, well, don't think that because we could have a rock slide or a landslide here. But anyway, the point being, I committed to do it, lots of obstacles in the way, but I merged that passion or desire with the emotion I knew I would feel at the end because I had overcome in my life something that was extremely difficult. That's an example I hope along the way that you were uh, inserting yourself and your goal and your challenge to. Uh, I want to quote again what Vince Lombardi said, another quote. He's such a great coach and he applied everything to life. He wasn't just talking about football. And he was so into fundamentals and his commitment. But he said the quality of a person's life is in direct, for, direct proportion to the commitment, to their commitment. Let me start over. The quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence irregardless of their chosen field of endeavor. So the quality of your life, we're not talking about playing football. We're talking about fill in the blank, whatever you want to improve, whatever you want to talk about, whatever you feel your uniqueness in life demands, whatever that is, your quality of life is absolutely dictated by your level of commitment, irregardless of what, that area is. So a closing thought I want to share with you is Abraham Lincoln said, commitment is what transforms a promise into reality. Whatever it is you want in life, whatever it is that promise that you want, 
commitment is what will turn that into reality. So sit back and say, what reality do I want in my life? No matter what it is, make it a 10x goal. Make it something you never thought possible. And if you stay committed to that, you will absolutely achieve it. I know that's true. It's happened in my life over and over and over. This isn't magic. This is literally putting science to work. Commitment is an act. It's not a bunch of words. And stick to it, and you can absolutely do it. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. And stay committed to what it is that's important in your life. Until next time, take care, and we will see you soon.